like to say good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm going to do better than that. I'd like to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be in the house of prayer. House of Lord. Yeah. No Jill yeah. came back from Charleston, South Carolina. So, uh, just good. I know y'all had a great time. I know. Let me tell you, you do need every now and then to get a vacation. Amen. Get some time. I know Jerry drove up around all that. That's from North Carolina and all that. But whatever you want to do, you need to get away. Again, and just always remember that. You know, it's good to work, it's good to, to be, but every now and then you need to take a trip and go and do something. So be praying about it. We've been dealing on this fallout, an uh, overflow from Jose and Goma. And again, I've been talking about marriage. And I've been talking about how God designed children. And I told you again, marriage was made for procreation, for children and mass production. Uh, that's why, again, I know I get in trouble a lot. That's why God is not for, uh, again, same sex, he's not for the same union, because they cannot produce. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's just stay with the Bible, okay? Yeah. I asked, I told you last time, since I've been teaching on this, the Holy Spirit has been pressing on me to open up the floor if you have questions. So I did have a question come up, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer. The question to come up is, should I let my ex back into my life when they messed it up and broke the cover. When they, I separated from them and they acted the fool. Should I let them back in? Okay. So, that's a good question. Yes, it is. The answer to the question is always scripture. Yes. Repentance. Yes. Did the person really repent? Now, some people say they repent, but they didn't repent. The Bible in 2 Corinthians 7, 10 says, for God that sorrows leads, work of repentance leads to salvation. So, we do see a picture of Goma. Hosea gave her a, a, again a decree said, now nah, you can come back home, but you can't be running around with all the men. You're going to have to make sure that this is what you want to do. So yes, you can receive that person back, but bathe, make sure it's through. Bathe in prayer. Make sure that person is for real. Make sure that person is, is like I say, have the same core values. They're going to come back and line up with the things of God and line up with making the marriage work. Yes, it can happen. Now, again, I know what you're saying. It's highly unlikely, but it can happen. Amen? Amen. 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 Do they need to be equally yoked? Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah. You married to them. You need to share with them your conviction. And they broke the marriage. And you need to share with them what God says according to his covenant. They need to have God repentance of the salvation and say, I'm willing to let God lead me in this marriage. Yes. Amen. But again, I hate to say this, but I say it again. A lot of people fake it. You know, fake it. They ain't for real. So let's know you, you need to make sure you pray about it, get some counsel. You know, a lot of times tears are just what they call crocodile tears. They ain't real tears. So, so you need tears that are real, that they're coming from all this person that truly repentance. Now, if they ain't repentant, they're going to cause some more havoc in their life. So you need to really be careful. Amen? Amen. Repentance, godly repentance, godly sorrow, not the sorrow of the world. So a lot of people, you know, when the police pull up over after running the ticket, they, oh, they just got caught. They ain't really sorry. <laughs> now they're going to speed the next time. But a person that truly want to do right and want to get right. Now, I'll be honest with you. There are some people that really change because the Holy Spirit got hold of them. And like I said, they don't really miss their will until they run dry. Then they realize what they had. Now, I, I, I personally, my family, has a 10-year separation that will remarry. And I was at the wedding. After 10 years, they've been separated. Doing it. Both of them been doing their own thing. But somehow, God got a hold of both of them hard. And they got right. And they got remarried. And they had grown truth. So I'm just saying, never give up. Never give up. Now, again, I can put everybody in that situation. But those two were willing to, to do. Amen? Amen? So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to give you, a, uh, again, some examples of marriage that was orchestrated by God in the scriptures. You know, well, you know, I started out last two weeks ago asking the question, are you supposed to be married to sin? Y'all remember that? What was the answer? Your freedom, your liberty. So we're going to start out today with another question. Okay? I want you to answer the question how you feel God led to. Are all marriage made in heaven? All marriage is made in heaven. Okay. Is there only one person out there, your soulmate, for you? Only one. Is there only one person 
out there for you. Those are questions that we're going to answer as we study the Word of God. To give you a quick answer, Ruth, first husband died, Milo. Remember, she came back with Bethlehem, but she got a second husband with Boaz. So apparently there was two out there for her. So, so, so don't always say there's only one person because the, the first husband died and she got married again. So, so we don't, we can't say that. But well, God, we're going to talk about today how the sovereign hand of God and your, again, your individual will work out for God's honor and glory. Now again, we make mistakes, but God knows the mistake we're going to make before we ever make it. Amen? And he can work through our mistakes. Y'all y'all, listen to me today. So we're going to look at three examples in the Bible of married people and how they came together. And how God's sovereignty and God's providence brought them together. And again, we're going to look at Adam and Eve. If you notice, Adam was just Mary running alone and God said it was not good for him to be alone. Y'all remember the story? So God brought Adam a wife. Eve, amen? So God know you. He know your personality. He know your character. He, if you need a spouse, God can bring you up, but you need to let God be the one that orchestrates marriage. Amen, somebody? Amen. Then we're going to look at Isaac and Rebecca. Now again, I told you in the Old Testament it was pre-raised marriage. And Abraham sent his servant out to find a wife for his son Isaac. And they never met. But somehow the servant began to pray and that's God let it be the one that give water to my camel and it was the one and then when he brought him back they got married. Amen? Orchestrated by God. Amen? I know what you're saying. Well that's in the Old Testament. Let me have that. God still works in your life. God still orchestrates the people you hang out with, the people you marry with. God can work in it if you allow Him to work. Amen. Don't leapfrog God. Don't jump over her. God puts some hurdles in your life. You wait on God. Amen. Somebody. Amen. Then we're going to look at it again already with your boys and Ruth. I'll be honest with you. Ruth wasn't looking for a husband, and boys wasn't looking for a wife. But God orchestrated because it was the kid and the redeemer. It was a picture of what God can do to bring the marriage together. And by the way, they had boys, and boys are in the line that. It's the great grandfather of David. They meant something. So God worked all this out. You said, how does God work it out? I, I'm not God. I know that He's all knowing, He's all powerful, and He worked things out. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. I could preach a little bit on Joseph and Virgin Mary. Because y'all know the story. They was again in trial or uh, engaged, but again, God was working it out. She was a virgin, and God, He was a godly man, and God worked it out. And then I'm going to give you one that you probably don't think a lot about. Simon and Rahab. Rahab is in the genealogy of Christ. Yeah. 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 You're going to find that the Rahab turned away from, again, that false religion to embrace the God of Israel that God gave her husband. Amen, yeah. somebody. Yeah. So take your Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter 2. You know, I have several scriptures today, but I need you to walk with me through the Bible. You know how I do. I give you the Bible, and then I give you a title, then we pray, then we walk through the Bible. Only thing I have that's going to help you is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. A lot of people say their opinion, until my opinion don't mean nothing, my, my philosophy don't mean nothing, policy don't mean nothing. I have to go with thus said the Word of God. Genesis chapter 2. Did that say amen? Amen. Keep your finger there and also turn to Genesis chapter 24. So we're going to look at Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 24, and then Ruth. Now Ruth is not that far to find. It's, it's just a few books over. Ruth chapter 4. And all these are going to help us to kind of nail down marriage is made in heaven. Is there only one person out there for you? We're going to look at how God, through the scripture, worked out marriage in our life. Again, God wants us to have a marriage that brings honor and glory to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 24 and Ruth chapter 4. If you there, say amen. Amen. If you're not, say wait, say wait on Again, yeah, I want you to follow me in the Word of God. I'm a Bible teacher, but I'm also a stickler when it comes to staying with the book. Amen. Me and Jerry have a lot of conversations all the time. I said, Jerry, if the Bible is silent, then I'm silent. I'm not going to try to you know, come up with what I think. Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you the best 
analysis on the best dissect that I have from studying the Bible, but let's stay with the Bible. Amen. Genesis chapter 2. Can they say amen? Amen. amen. Let's look at verse 18 and then we're going to jump to verse 21. And the Lord God said, read that with me. It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make for him a healthy for him. So God decided that man need to be married. Now I told you before, Adam named all the animals and he was watching the rabbits and watching everybody have a mate. And Adam didn't really know, but then God said, you know, Adam, it's not good for you to be alone. Now, that does not mean that you cannot be single. If you have the gift of celibacy and you can stand living for the Lord, Paul said, I wish people like I was, because I can serve the Lord better. I, I said this to you before, I'm, I'm, I'm married, so I can't stay out all night witnessing, because I got a wife, amen, I got to come home. Now, if I was single, I could spend the night in the hotel, spend the night in my car, because it's mine, I'm single. But when you're married, you got to care for the things of your spouse. Amen? Okay, let's look at 21. I'll read 21 you read 22. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is not bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Read verse 25 with me. And they were naked and man and his wife were not ashamed. Now we're always hearing about the woman leaving. The scripture is clear that the man should leave. And I'll be honest with you, a man need to cut an apron string from his mom. A lot of times they don't. And they come into a marriage and expect it, the wife to be the mom. And that's not right. Oh. Amen, somebody. Amen. But he cut the apron string. So he said, leave your mom and daddy and stop comparing your wife to your mom. Amen. You know, I, I'm just, I'm just bringing it. Okay? Right. So turn to Genesis chapter 24. Did that say amen? amen? Genesis chapter 24, we start at verse 60. I'll read 61 until we get down to 67. And they blessed Rebecca, this is after she decided she's going to go and be Isaac's wife, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate thee. Verse 61. And Rebecca rose, and Rebecca rose, and they rose upon the mountain. Now, I want you to notice here that Rebecca took some handmaids with her dancing, but it wasn't like Joseph. I mean, it wasn't like Jacob. Jacob, when Leah and, and, and Rachel took, he ended up having babies by the handmaid. Now, I didn't do that. So it was only supposed to be one wife, one man, and that's what uh, Isaac's a picture. Verse 62 says, And Isaac came from the way of the well, the horror, for he dwelt in the south country. Verse 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening time. And he looked up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Now here's a man that's a prayer man. He's already out in the field talking to the Lord, not, not knowing that his wife is going to come or his fiance is on the way. He's praying, okay? That's why men need to pray for a wife if that's what you want. God will send you the woman that will meet your need. Amen, somebody. Amen. Verse 54. I mean, 64. Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she light off the camera. Verse 65. She used to show him to her, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet him? And the servant said, it is my master. Therefore she took the veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac, and told Isaac the whole thing, that he had done. I reverse it seven with you. And Isaac brought her to his mother Sarah's tent and took her back, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So we see Adam get a wife, God brought her. We see Isaac took the chance of talking to the Lord, and God brought him a wife. Now I want you to know he never 
never seen her, but he trusted God to bring the woman that would meet his need. Amen, somebody. Amen. Turn the roof. This one I may labor on a little bit longer because a lot of people have a problem with this one. This is a mixed marriage. What you saying, preacher? I'm saying that Boaz was a Jew and Ruth was a Moabite. And we always had the problem, should I marry somebody that's a different, a head of coach, a different, yes, if they say and y'all love each other and God put you together. Amen? I'm tired of this. You ain't supposed to marry outside of here. No, that's not true. I can marry anybody that I want to in the Lord. If they love the Lord and I love the Lord and God called us together, I'm sick and tired of this saying black should marry. Right? Right? That is not in the scripture. Amen. Let me read a little bit. Ruth, chapter 4. You let say amen. I'm going to read verse 13. He's going to jump down. It says, So Boaz, read that with me, took the roof, and she was his wife. And when he went in to her, the Lord gave her conception, and she buried a son. So here we see three couples in the Bible. Which is Adam got a wife, God brought him to her. Isaac got a wife, God made his daddy and his servant, and he's praying in the field, bringing to her. And then we see an unusual case. Boaz was a bit of an older rich man, just out praising the Lord for his service. And then that's a woman that shows up in the field. Now another story, right? And she's not looking for a husband. He's not looking for But then somehow her mother-in-law said, you know what? You need a husband. Should I seek rest for you? You need somebody you can. So she tell her what to do. And then she ended up going to Boaz, and he ended up accepting her plea and going to the elder and taking it for his wife. I want you to hear me well. All of this was orchestrated by God. Okay? This wasn't no happenstance or no coincidence. God used it. How do you know, preacher? Because later on you'll find out that Ruth and Rahab are in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. So I want to preach to you for a little while on the sovereignty and the providence of God before and after you get married. God worked before and he worked after. So don't throw God out of the picture. If you are interested in getting married, God will work before the scene and he'll work after the scene because he's God and he can do it all. So we're going to preach about the sovereignty and providence of God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another Lord's Day, a day that you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the saints of God coming out to the house of God to hear from the word of God. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for, again, let me down in church and do it. Lord, we're still struggling with the Delta variant with COVID-19. And Lord, I, I had somebody ask me, why is God allowing that? I really believe God is trying to get our attention. We have gone away from God. We're anti-God. We're anti-Christ. Anti-Mars. And so God is trying to get us to wake up. Wake up, world, and, and turn back to the Lord. We can put everything as idols. Sports an idol. Everything works as an idol. We put everything before God. So God is trying to get some attention. But Lord, we need prayer for the school system. Schools are opening doors. And we're trying to do the best we can to adhere to CDC. I know in Atlanta and in Georgia they got masks for all the students. In Tennessee, the governor not, he had mandated that. But we still have some that are wearing masks. And the teachers are being vaccinated, Lord. And so we're just praying, Lord, that we don't have another epidemic and we don't have another second wave, Lord. We don't want the schools to start and then two or three weeks in the school, they have a big uh, outbreak. And then we have to go back to hybrid and virtual, which is really hard for us, Lord. So we just pray that you would end up being the work that situation. Now, thank you for, again, the nurses, the doctors, uh, the firemen, the police, everybody that's working, uh, uh, the medics, uh, the hospital, the ICUs. Just thank you for everybody that's working, Lord. Even thank you for the vaccine. I know it's still some, some, some studies out and still got to do more testing. But Lord, just thank you for what you've done so far. Lord, thank you for the ones that are on the side of my heart. Pray for those that could not be here. I thank about Beth going to visit a family in Nashville, my wife. I had to do something this morning. So Lord, we pray that you would, uh, and then the gym, just pray that you would uh, minister to them where they are. Now, Lord, I pray that you forgive me of my sin. Help me to write and divide the word of truth. Help me to teach and preach. Only those things will edify and will be kept in your order, honor, and prayer. For the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. The sovereignty. What you saying, preacher? Sovereignty and providence simply mean that God is in control of all things. You know, people have a problem with that. 
A while there's suffering going on. A while because God gave man a free will. And because the devil has not been tied up yet and cast in a lake of fire. Y'all want me to preach a little bit? God is not causing all this mess. It's the enemy. It's the devil calling it. So God is still in control. Now let me help you out. Even though the devil is causing it, he still got to answer God. Yeah. Oh, you said, but God, no, God is allowing him. I want you to hear me with it. Allow him to run free for a little while. Because he needs people to get saved like you and me. There were people like, before we got saved, and, and I don't want to preach on myself, but you know what we did before we got saved. And God sovereignly allowed us to continue to do all that sin, but then he had grace and he allowed us to come into the family. So there are people out there in my family, in your family, in the world that still don't know the Lord. So God is allowing here, allowing them to smoke crack and dope until somebody shared with God. God is allowing them to be caught up in the homosexual until somebody shared with God. God is allowing them to keep sinning. But one day, if God keep working on them and keep convicting, maybe they will turn to the old home of God. Let me see. God can make the Bible say, I was talking to my family. I said, the Bible says the word of God is sharper than any two his soul. Even the cut divided of thought and heart. God can cut. I don't care how bad you locked in sin. I don't care how much you've been tricked. I don't care how much you've been deceived. The word of God can knock it out of me. He knocked it out of me. I know he can knock it out of somebody else. So don't think like that God can't save nobody. If we give up on people, but God don't give up. Let me see. Who you marry or who you not marry is still in God's property to you. God balances knowledge and your free will and your responsibility because he knows your past and your future. God knows the mistake you're going to make. He knows the future things you're going to do. So God is still working things out for his honor and glory. Ephesians, uh, Ecclesiastes 16 and says, that which has been is, uh, is named already. So God knows, he knew from the foundation of the world, he knew who you were married and who you were not married. He knew whether you've been divorced or whether you're not divorced. He knew whether you've been single. He knew whether you've been remarried. God knew it from the foundation of the world, and he knows what's going to happen in the future. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Don't get caught up in you know, what God knows. Now, if I walk with God, he'll reveal it to me. Amen, somebody. Amen. God knows my destiny. He knows. I just thought about this one in my missus. What's the lady name that uh, never thought she'd get married? She was single for all her years. Uh, she got a radio program. Uh, well, what's the woman name? Ladies, help me. Uh, she got a program. She was dealing with a single woman. She married a man who wife died for cancer. I, I think of it. But anyway, she said she never thought she'd get married. She said she thought God had created a single. She was in her fifties when she got married. She said, I never thought I got married. And then when the man came, and begin to propose to her, she said, I don't know what I can love them, but I ain't never loved them before. But they've been married and they're doing well. Amen, somebody. Amen. So don't, don't give up on God. God is still in control of doing the preparation for marriage, the promise of marriage, and the prize pitch. God is still doing it. God knows our human success, our human failure. God knows what we do and what we don't do. God knows how to work things out. But let me just be honest with you. If you're under the word, like you're under this word, and you plan on doing something with your life, at least seek God first. Get some counsel. You know, again, I can't do them and tell people dust it. You know, I, I didn't have counsel. I, I hate to be honest with you, but I didn't have a counsel when I got married. Nobody told me what a Christian man is. Nobody told me how to love my wife. So God did it. Use my fault. And still forgave me and let my wife forgive me and still bless our marriage. Amen, somebody. So, so don't give up. Now, those of you who are hearing me, if you're considering marriage or whatever, get some counsel. We call it pre council marriage. And by the way, you need it post counsel when you get married. Because all that stuff don't, don't work out when you, so you need counsel both sides. Amen. And by the way, I say this all the time, and I'm a pastor, and I say it husband and wife think differently. Amen, somebody. Amen. My wife don't think like me, and, and, and no one there. So sometimes we have to get a third person. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. Well, uh, okay, okay. Let's ask my sister. Let's ask your brother. Because you know we we can't seem to come in agreement. But we always try to ask a godly Christian person. Amen. Amen? Amen. So always remember that. Let's start with the first couple, Adam and Eve. Now I want y'all to hear me well. 
Adam didn't have no ex-girlfriend that she could bring up. Well, you know, you're just talking, no, he didn't have no ex-girlfriend. And he didn't have no ex-boyfriend. So, 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 you know, that's another problem. We get in a relationship, we want to bring up somebody ex. They ain't got nothing to do with that, okay? You can't bring up nobody ex, amen? Oh, y'all want me to preach it, man. You're going to the mall, and you see somebody that you used to date. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You want to bring that mess up? Look, it's over. It's done with. It's buried in the blood. I'm a preacher now. Y'all forgive me. When I was at the school one time, and I saw this girl, and I said, you look familiar. She said, oh, I used to date you. I said, oh, no, that was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who was. I had a tank grader. I said, I'm, I'm a preacher now. I'm preaching the word of God, so I'm sorry. So, you know, but was, that happens in your life. Amen? So let me just tell you. Remember, you know, we all made some mistakes in our life. Amen? And by the way, we all did. We all did it because we were young. Amen, somebody. Amen. So y'all remember that, okay? So Adam and Eve, Adam didn't have to worry about Eve bringing up, like I said, his ex-girlfriend, he had to worry about, uh, uh, she bringing up uh, uh, her ex-boyfriend. How the first family started. God created man in his own image. God said that Adam, it was not good for you to be alone. God said, and by the way, I'm going to be honest with you. Some men can live alone, but some men can't. You know, you know, some men, you know, have a desire and like to have a woman or you're sleeping with him or like to have uh, somebody cooking for him or something. Say everybody's different. Amen, somebody. Amen. So God looked at him and said, yeah, you know what, you need some help. You know, I know you, I know you, you, you doing everything but you need some help. So God brought him in. Amen, somebody. Amen. The need of the woman came from God. The woman is essential in God's plan. Women must be a helpmate to complete out. It's like a glove to a hand. She was supposed to help him. And let me preach a little bit. Women, you don't have to tear your husband down. You don't have to criticize your husband. He ain't perfect and you ain't perfect. But be his helpmate. Say, look, I know you didn't make the right decision, but I'm praying for you. And we're going to work this thing out. Let me preach a little bit. Amen. Amen. I know what we grew up on the side of everybody criticizing everybody. Well, the reason that's because of you. We are family. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. God caused Adam to fall asleep. The anesthesiologist unconsciously took that rib from Adam and built a woman and brought her to Adam. And Adam recognized him. Adam had never seen her before. But when Adam opened his eye, he said, Whoa! <laughs> and he said, Whoa! He said, Now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Adam said, This is what I've been looking for. Amen, somebody. Amen. Y'all act like y'all don't mean to preach. God designed man. God designed the woman and the man. God made us made. Amen, somebody. Amen. The union was in the zone. One flesh. God, the loving father, brought Eve to Adam. God, Adam trusted God, and God brought him to mate. Let me help you out. God will bring you a mate if you trust him. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Now y'all mean to preach a little bit? Now, sometimes. We have this list that they got meat for us. Let me tell you, throw that list in the guy. Ain't nobody gonna meet that list. You're gonna have to get somebody who God has brought to you. And a lot of times, oh, let me preach a little. The person that God brought to you will be the one you least expect. You say, oh, I, I didn't know it was gonna fall that one up. That was the one, that was the one God brought to you. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Y'all mean preach a little bit? Adam, it's the celebration of joy. The Bible says in 24 that Adam must leave his mother and father and cleave. We're talking about cleaving to your wife, become one flesh. Leaving and cleaving and weaving, okay? Adam cleaved to his wife, and him and Eve became that family of success. Amen, somebody. So let me just tell you, God created Adam and God, let me just say this a little bit. I've been preaching this for a long time. Men are ain't different. Women cry more than men. That's just normal. It's because of the, the God created them. Women have the elected for, for bringing milk when they have children. Men can't do that. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? It's different. So we need to understand that. So, so I, I always get the story where well, she don't understand how she don't understand you. She ain't no man. And he don't understand you. So trust God. We are different, but God made us to mesh together. Amen, somebody. He wanted to come to raise the children. Yeah, y'all gonna have different thoughts. But sit down and pray about it. And ask God, and God will give you the victory. Amen, somebody. Amen. I 
know I'm kind of the hammer in the house. Boom! Well, sometimes I'm too hard. And I have to get my wife to kind of smooth it out. Amen, somebody. Amen. You got to learn how to do that. Amen. You know, I'm the hammer, she's the children. The children are the, the sculptures, so they get beat on them. <laughs> so we need to keep working it out. So Adam and Eve brought the first institution of marriage, and they brought the first home, and God blessed it. And they didn't. I told you this, if you never heard it, I told you this last week. Adam lived to be 930 years old. And as far as I know, Adam only had one wife, and his wife was probably, they probably been married over 900 years. I'm telling you, we get the seven years here, I don't know where that comes from. Y'all ever heard that? Or we get the midlife crisis. Something wrong with that. Amen. Adam stayed with Eve all the years. Amen. Point number one. Adam meets Eve. Couple number two. Y'all with me? Sorry to you, and the providence of God before you say I did. Isaac meets Rebecca. Now this was a promise to Isaac's father, to Abraham. God said, I'm going to give you a seed as the sand as the grains of the, of, of the sand. Y'all remember that? And that's the stars of the sky. So then, in Genesis 24, 3, Abraham called his servant and told him, swear that thou will not take a wife from the daughters of the Canaan, but take my son and find him a wife in the lineage of of the good seed. By the way, what he's saying is he need a saved wife. He don't need a lost wife. Y'all know him. Samson. A Nazarite had took a vow. Couldn't drink anything. Couldn't change it. And then he still wanted to go out and date a Philistine woman. Y'all remember that? Samson, his dad said, why you got to have her? Well, she pleased me. No, she don't please you. It's your flesh. So let me tell you. God wants you to marry him in the Lord. So Isaac had to get a wife in the Lord. Marry for God provision. First step, the servant, who is a picture of the Holy Spirit, got down on his knees and prayed. And he prayed something like this, Oh Lord God, show kindness to, this is in uh, Genesis 24, 12, to my master Abraham. Be faithful to the covenant that you provide in the nation. And Lord, when I kneel down, and when I go to this well to get some water, let the, the devil that come to me offer me some water and then let her offer water for my tin camera. Y'all remember that? Praying for a mate. And before he got up, Rebecca was standing right there. Y'all remember the story? God can answer your prayer. Y'all listen to me? Rebecca was standing right there. And he had to go through that, that process that he'd been praying about. He said, uh, give me some water. She said, not only like you some water. But I will give you one for all your cameras. And he was shocked. He got to pray that. God was already providential answering his prayer. And by the way, if you didn't know the story, camels drank a lot of water. So here's a woman who wasn't scared to go work. She took the big old bucket and carried him on her arm and gave ten camels, not one camel, ten camels. So she would let him know. I'm a good wife. I'm a good woman. And he right there knew then. And he took some earrings out and put them on his ears and said, do you know Levin? And do you know she said, yeah, that's my husband. And then she took him home and it all worked out because God had providential designed Rebecca to be Isaac's wife. Maybe somebody. God was in control. God answered his prayer. Show him. Now, now here's a, one that thought about all. Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebecca. 40 years old? That's too old. Let me just tell you. Only God knows when you need to get married. Age is not a, a factor when it comes to God. Amen. We get all caught up in the age. Well, you ain't married if you're 25 years you're an old maid. That's not true. That's what we teach. You remember we play them cards, old maid? That's not true. Some people get married young. Some people get married old. It's up to God. I was, I, I was at the, my Northern Health Fair, the guy told me, he said, you know, I came young, 21 years, I got married, and I've been with the company 30 years. And I said, well, that's a blessing because you've been that young. But then some people get married old. I just tell you about Nancy DeVault. The DeMoss, that's what I'm talking about. Nancy DeMoss thought she was going to be single all her life. But God called her a husband. And she's been married now for the last, I guess, five years. Amen, somebody. Amen. So don't give up. Now, she didn't even have a desire, but God providentially knew that she needed a husband. And both of them are here Writers, biblical writers, they write books together. And they, they're doing things together. So both of them had a heart for the Lord. Amen, somebody. 
Isaac, not even Jewish culture. If I go back to Joseph and Mary, in the Jewish culture, a boy wasn't considered a man until he was 30. And in that time, he had to go to Bar Mitzvah, and his dad had to teach him a trade. Joseph, you know, was a carpenter. So his daddy was a carpenter. Y'all understand? But one reason why they did it to age 30 is because they wanted the man to be mature. I remember a preacher. A guy came to him to marry his daughter. The preacher said, wait a minute. She don't have a place to stay. Do you have a home? No, I don't have a home. Do you have a job? No, I don't have a job. He said, well, I got news for you. You're going to have to get a home and a job and some security before you marry my daughter. So it took a year. The guy went out and got him a stable job. Went out and bought him a home. And then they got married. Men need to be mature. Amen. Well, y'all mean preach a little bit? Some men don't even know how to pay the bills. I know a lady who had a good job and would give him money to pay the gas bill and the water bill, and she came home one day with her. And she said, What happened? He spent the money. He wasn't mature. Y'all act like y'all know y'all, 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 you never heard of that. Women need somebody that can get under his wing, somebody they can trust. Somebody that can, can, can be responsible. Somebody that can, can, can be here a provider and a priest and protector of a home. She needs to be able to trust him. She needs to be able to go to him and say, I, I need this done, and he take care of it. She needs somebody that she can put trust in. Now, she needs to trust in the Lord, but she needs a husband. Amen, somebody. Amen. 30 years old. He took Rebecca to marry. And here's the funny thing about it. She was buried just like Sarah. She couldn't have any children. So they prayed and said, God finally opened her womb. 20 years later, he married to her for 20 years. He had twins, Esau and Jacob. So don't get frustrated because your wife didn't get pregnant. You know, I've had men get upset. Well, she ain't, I want a child. She ain't got pregnant. Hold on a minute. The problem might be with you. We always blame the woman. But then they had found out, oh, let me preach a little bit, that some men had a low burn count and they couldn't pregnant. Oh, let me preach a little bit. So let's be careful. And by the way, if it's between a husband and a wife, you need to sit down and pray and ask the Lord. I know several couples, preachers, that went to the adoption agencies to get a, a, a adopted, and while they were waiting for the baby to get adopted, she got pregnant. Yes. Yes. And he said, uh, she got pregnant. So now they got a bottle of the child and went ahead and got a doctor child. Amen, somebody. Amen. So wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. So Isaac and Rebecca. Isaac, here it is. Blind day. Blind match. I don't know what you believe in that, but let me tell you, I, I did have a missionary come one time, and him and his wife were blind day. Somebody said that he served the Lord, she served the Lord. I think they'll make a good pair. And they told them about each other. They met, and now their marriage is booming. Amen, somebody. One of my preacher friends, I'm not going to call it down, right in the city, got met. He was serving the Lord, and his wife was serving the Lord. And this guy said, you know what, I think this girl who's single might be somebody you ought to meet. And they got married, and they got two wrong dogs. So let me tell you, don't, don't ever give up on nobody. Blind date. And, and here's the good part. When Rebecca was there, the servant went to our parents, and they said, we want to go ahead and take Rebecca back to meet Isaac. And the parents said, no, 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 well, we can't do that. that. That's too fast. And they said, well, let's ask Rebecca. Let's ask her. Let's get her opinion. And the parents was in the room, and the servant was in the room, and he said, I need to take you to meet your master, my master. And she said, I'll go. So she was willing. So here it is. Be willing to walk in the path that God called you to be. Don't be afraid. Don't be timid. She could have said, well, I don't know. You know, I don't know about Isaac. I ain't never met her. No, she said, I'm ready. I'm at an age now, but I'm ready to meet my little prince. You know, when we have all these Disney movies, <laughs> but Cinderella and the prince, y'all know what I'm talking about. And the frog, the prince, the, the witch put a spell on the frog, on the prince, he turned to the frog. Then he jumped into one of his princes and said, Yes, man, I turned you up. Y'all don't know. Uh -huh. Now let me tell you, be careful with that. Be careful with that. 
Because sometimes you may kiss each other do a bullfrog. He won't be no real friend. So I'm just saying, be careful with that. Don't take no chances. Oh, that's Hollywood. Let's do it God's way. Amen? Rebecca wasn't perfect. Matter of fact, later on in life, I want y'all to hear me. She tricked Isaac by having Jacob to lie that he was Esau. So she wasn't a perfect wife. But God still blessed her. And you know he had to break Jacob's will. But let me just tell you, let me hear, let me hear it again. No man is perfect and no woman is perfect. Amen. Y'all make a picture of that? Here we go. Who didn't put the top back on the toothpaste? Everybody do that, see? So everybody don't, everybody ain't perfect like you. You know, the toothpaste got to be just right. Don't squeeze it in the milk, squeeze it on the end. You know how to do it. Who, who put the toilet paper on the roll backwards? They don't roll it that way. I mean, everybody's different. So let it. Who, 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 who left, who left the top of the Come on. Let me tell you, man, it wasn't no different. Stop fussing about trivial things. Amen. Amen, so let <laughs> We fuss about it. Oh, here it is. You see my key. You see my phone. You move it. Somebody move your stuff. You always misplacing it and blaming everybody. So let's learn how to work things out. Amen. Amen, somebody. In the last couple, and then I'm done. Sorry with the providential hand of God before and after you say I do. Number one, Adam made Eve in the providential sovereign hand of God. And it worked out. Number two, Isaac met Rebecca in the providential hand of God. Amen? And then the last one is Boaz. Here it is. Boaz meets Ruth, the Moabite. Take, take the hand, Ruth. Get back in your Bible. I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn to Matthew chapter 1. Get back in your Bible. I'm going to show you something you might already know, but I'll show it to you again. Matthew chapter 1. When you get that same name. Matthew chapter 1. This is Jerry to the trans. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 5. Read that with me. And Simon begot Boaz of who? Rahab. And Boaz begot Obed of Ruth. And Obed begot Jesse. The next verse. And Jesse begot David the king. Hold it right there. Boaz's mother was Rahab. What? Boaz's mother was Rahab, the harlot, the prostitute, the one that protected the two sky, the two sky. What you saying? Me? I'm saying God is so sovereign. God is so righteous that He let a woman who turned away from her uh, a people and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now here we go. A pattern of two women who abandoned their past, their culture, their people to embrace the true and living God. Remember Ruth? Mm -hmm. No one said, well, I'm sorry, but living like a day and Julia and mine, and then my two sons are there. So as far as I know, I'm going back to Bethlehem, but y'all need to go back to your father's house. So I ain't got no more boys. I ain't got no more children. And if I was to have children, you go wait till they grow up. And Ophel went home. Y'all remember the story? But Ruth, clean to her mom and all. And this is what she said. When you go, I'm going to go. When you do, I'm going to do. When you die, I'm going to die. And your God shall be my God. It's a more white woman. Loves her mother -in so much that she's willing to go. And let me tell her, I'm a poor. Naomi came back and said, don't call me Naomi. Call me my Ira. She was bitter. By the way, don't get bitter. Because you sometimes get in a place where, you know, a lot of people get divorced and, and all this mess going on and they don't understand. Don't get them. I tell people all the time, you know, God still knows what's going on in your life. Amen. Yeah, I don't understand why the judge didn't, 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 didn't sell on you. I don't know, but I know God knows. And let me say this. People don't like me to say that. That person who did you wrong, they're going to have to answer God one day. Amen. I don't know why people can't see that. But it looks like they're getting away. They ain't getting away. Amen. Oh, it looks like they ain't gotten away. I, I tell people, I say, they may be getting away right now. But one day, they're going to have to stand before a holy and a righteous God. And one day, they're going to have to say, I treated my wife bad. And God, you're going to have to judge him for that. So I'm going to tell you, don't get upset. I look like your spouse got away with murder. Don't get upset. So one day, they got to answer to a mighty holy God. And God's going to ask him, why you didn't live right? And why you did what you did? And why you abandoned your spouse? God's going to do it. We get all upset. But they, they, they took the money, I don't know. 
don't care what they do. They're going to have to repay it. But, but what, I don't care what they did. If they did it in, in vengeance, God said, vengeance is mine. I don't know. We can all say with these people always. I was at my family bank. My sister said, You done came in melancholy. You don't, you don't get upset about stuff in my soul. What do you get upset on me? Amen. I mean, I say, God know about it. That's right. Well, that means you're not going to do nothing. I said, I'm sorry, I don't do nothing. Do everything in my power in a godly way. Amen. And let God look at it. You, you say, What? They, they get enough. The, the biggest thing today is cussing every kid. Now, I understand that God knows about that. Now, I understand that you've been doing right. And the judge going to give him the cuss of the kid? I say this, well, let's wait down the road and see what happens. Amen. I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it to you today. There have been men that took the kid from the woman. And when the boy got old enough, he told his dad, I said, you never came. You never did. You get my mama home, and I'm going to live with my mama. So I'm telling you right now, don't get upset. Later on down the road, God can reverse you. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Boaz and Ruth. Boaz, I told you. Now, I want y'all to hear as well. When Obed was born, when Boaz had this son, the son had two privileges. The first privilege was he was a son of Boaz, so Boaz was rich. So he owned his inheritance of everything that Boaz had. Amen? Amen? And then he pledged to Ruth as her son. So Ruth and her ex-husband, Malon, he became heir for what she had. So Boaz is, was able and willing to redeem the field. And so Boaz was going to raise up this seed. So God used the promise of Ruth and Boaz as the kinsman redeemer. The promise of the sceptre shall not depart. Uh, just like I said, Rahab was Boaz's mother. So God converted a prostitute. And God, just like I told you, with Goma and, and, and Hosea, God allowed Goma to come back. So don't give up. God, the principle is a type. God wants us to wait on him. God wants us to trust him. Even when it looks like we can't understand and why things happen that don't make sense. Let me tell you, God can work it out for his honor and glory. I'm a prime example. I had a stepfather. My father loved my mom. I had a dad. I don't want to be hard on everything, but I grew up and God kept me and he protected me and I'm preaching tonight and I don't have any bitterness or any hate to anybody in my family, but God did. They meant somebody. We get all bent out of shape. Don't get bent out of shape. By the way, did you know sometimes God used that pain to make you strong. Oh, yeah. Amen. He used that pain to make you strong. I remember when I was a young man, my wife would be to get on me. And I said to myself, I said, I don't want to be an old man and my children don't know who I am. I don't want to be an old man and don't own my children. I don't want to be like that. And I don't know where it came from. I don't want to even say, but in my mind, I was saying, I want to be there for my children. Amen? So Y'all want me to preach a little bit? The problem with Afro-Americans today is the lack of fathers. The lack of men, godly men in the home. Y'all want me to preach a little bit? Siren kids and then don't claim them. Oh, y'all want me to preach a little bit? They have to do a DNA swap on you. They find out what you're the real dad. And then when you get caught up and caught up and you 99 percent that, they garnish your wages. That all not be. You ought to be saying, look, this is my child, this is my wife, I'm going to do what's right. With the help of God. Boaz stepped up and became kids of the redeemed. First Corinthians 7 13 said, you are in liberty to marry whoever you want to, only in the Lord. Amen. Not ethnicity, not culture, not color. It doesn't really matter. As long as I know missionaries who went over in the field and found a spouse in the other culture there and married because they served the Lord and they loved the Lord. Amen. As I close, I'm going to say this. This ain't even my message. The problem we have today is that. Culture is dogging out mixed children. 
And so children that are mixed have a problem because everybody treat them bad. Yep. That's wrong. The church child had nothing to do with it. My mama being white, my daddy being white, had nothing to do with it. And so what we do is we treat them different. God is going to judge this old wicked world for them. The child, here it is, the Bible says the child are heritage from the Lord. Amen. I've had several students that told me, and I don't mean to picture myself, they, when you fill out an application, they have on a black, white, Hispanic, uh, and they've asked me, what should I check? I said, what do you mean what you should check? Well, my mom is black and my dad is white. I don't know what I am. And my heart just shrink that the child was that confused. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. But let me tell you, love people anyway. God is not a respecter of person. Boaz and Ruth had a son, and they went on to serve. Well, I don't have time to tell you that Moses married Zephora. She was on the backside. She was a woman of color. I don't have time to tell you about all the men in the Bible that had married. Uh, Bathsheba was a woman of color. I don't have time to tell you about it. But these people married people, and they did bring honor and glory to the Lord. And here they live. Ruth and Rahab and Bathsheba are in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. You might not like it, but I'm telling you today, I had a mistake go to Africa, and he told them those women were women of color. They're in the genealogy of Jesus. So let's not stop preaching the Bible. Amen. God ordained marriage. God is sovereign. God is providential. I don't even know what's going on in your life, but put it in the hand of God. But whatever is going on in your life, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you think of. What they didn't do, I don't care what they didn't do. God can work it out. But it's, I, I don't care what, what happened. That's in the past. You know what I did? I buried it under the blood. Well, let's not fuss about what they did and how they got away with the burden. All they got away with nothing. I, I say this, and this just came to my mind. This guy was asking the person, he said, Do you know how many murders was in 2019? The guy said, 200,000 murders was in 2019. He said, Do you know how many they brought to trial? He said, out of 200,000 murders in 2019, they only brought 100,000 to trial. He said, well, what do you think about the 100,000 that got away? He said, they ain't got away. That's right. You might think they got away. Amen. We might not get proven, but guess what? One day, yes. they got to stand before a whole yes. Amen. I got news for you. They don't repent. They don't die and burn. They don't say, hey. I don't care what they did. They will never get away. God is too holy. God is too mighty. So let's not worry about Now I know we need government. And I know we need judges. And I know we need lawyers. And I know we got, you know, all kind of cell phone towers. We got all kind of stuff. But let's depend on the Lord. Amen. Because he will work it out. Amen? Amen. Well, y'all don't believe me. He's going to work it out. Amen. Work it out for his honor and his glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the word of God. Lord, as I close, I always give an opportunity for those to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as they say. Maybe you're watching me by Facebook and you never received the Lord. Or maybe you're in a marriage situation or in a divorce situation or in a remarriage situation or in a sinner situation. You need some help. Let me first of all say you need to be saved. If you never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to pray a simple prayer. I give it to you openly and you can pray silently. It goes something like this. Dear Lord, I'm a son of Lord, I cannot save myself. Lord, I've been trying for all these years and I have not. I fall short. Lord, would you forgive me of my sins, Lord? Lord, I believe that Jesus came. I believe that he died. And I believe that he rose from the dead. Come in my whole Lord Jesus today. Come in my whole Lord Jesus today. If you pray that prayer, I want to tell you that's the starting point. The second point is you need to get into a Bible and into church. And you need to get under some good biblical teaching. And then you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Some people don't realize that the Holy Spirit will never make a mistake. Will never lead you wrong. So whatever happened in your life past, God can rectify. God can, can make up the head. So let's come to God and give Him all our needs and all our uh, liabilities and all our responsibilities. Let God lead us in the path of life. So until next week, friends, I want to encourage you to continue to study the Word of God. Get into a Bible in the church. Continue to serve the true living God. Amen.
Jesus' Christ's name I pray.